Hi, scholars. I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm Mrs. Mapplebane from Archway Glendale. And I have a great topic that we're going to cover. We're going to be talking about the organization NASA and the space shuttle and astronauts. And really do an overview of the whole space program. So let's start kind of with the basics. The history of NASA. The NASA initials NASA stand for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. That's where we get NASA from. It's responsible for unique scientific and technological achievements in human spaceflight. Well, we're talking about astronauts. Why don't we define what an astronaut is? An astronaut is a person who is trained to travel in a spacecraft. There are both men and women that are astronauts. So that's a, since I talked about spacecraft, let's define spacecraft. Spacecraft is a vehicle used for traveling in space. That's pretty simple definitions. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the information around this program and how it started. Talking about spacecraft, so many of you have been on planes, I'm sure, and you've traveled somewhere on this planet. The difference is you weren't in a spacecraft. When you were flying on an airplane, you were reaching a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. That's pretty high up in the sky. However, to reach space and outer space, you have to go all the way up to 264,000 feet. That's like you can't even see that high. Amazing information. So when did NASA start? NASA opened for business on October 1st. In 1958, but what really started NASA moving forward was an interesting aspect. It was a program that started to expand interest into space. And what started the interest in space travel as a country? In the 1960s, President Kennedy made a speech at Rice University. I'm going to say part of his speech to help us all understand why it began. So this is the words of President Kennedy. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept. We are unwilling to postpone, and one which will intend to win, and the other goals we accept to. The official declaration occurred on May 25, 1961. President Kennedy stood before Congress and proposed that if state should commit itself to achieving a goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon, which is not that, we need to return the man safely back to Earth. It took the United States eight years of developing the right system and the right programs to put into a capsule to be able to go to outer space. And in that eight years, after the eight years, the vision was achieved. July 1969, with the Apollo 11 mission, which was a lunar landing. There have been 10 programs with NASA. Let me share their names with you. So the first one is Mercury Pro, the Mercury Program, and this was in 1959. It was the first U.S. crewed program, and then they went to the Gemini Program. This was to send individuals, astronauts, into space and do rendezvous. And then they had the Apollo Program, which brought the first human to the moon. They had Skylab. This was in 1973 and 1974, where they began working with the International Space Station. The Apollo Soyuz test project was a joint venture with the United States and the Soviet Union at the time. The space shuttle, that was done in 1981. It was the first mission in which a spacecraft was reused. So that was the beginning of reusing the actual capsule uh, for a second time. The um, 
Joe program was also a Russian project in 1995. And then in 1996 was the actual International Space Station. And that was a joint venture with other countries, not just the United States. And then there was the Project Constellation in 2003. It actually was shut down in 2010. It was a program that was canceled, and the goal of it was to bring humans to the moon. So now we have the Artemis program that started on 2017, and it still exists today. Its current program is to bring humans to the moon again. The mission that I and your parents and probably your grandparents are more familiar with is the space shuttle series. There's five space shuttles. The first one was Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor. Look at your screen. You'll see all five space shuttles. The shuttles look very similar. It had improvements as the next shuttle was designed. So you might ask, Mrs. McAvoy, is space flight risky? Yes, absolutely, it is very risky. In fact, we have lost many astronauts in training and in space flight. Let me share with you how many courageous astronauts have lost their life while in a spacecraft. In 1966, the Apollo, we lost three astronauts. There was a pre-flight check, and in the cabin there was a fire. In 1986, there was the Challenger. There were seven astronauts on that shuttle, and the explosion was right after liftoff. In 2008, with Columbia, we also lost seven astronauts. The explosion happened after their mission to space on their reentry. So that's 17 heroes that we have that we lost in the space program. Why is it important to recognize the lives that were lost? First, they are heroes, and they display courage as they ventured into a new frontier of space. Just as important is that we learn from our mistakes. In life, mistakes happen. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, yet we must learn from them. The NASA program learned from each of these spacecraft explosions and improved on the next generation's design. Let's look at what NASA is working on today. The current program, as I mentioned earlier, is called Artemis. Well, what does Artemis mean? Artemis is a Greek goddess. In Greek mythology, she is the daughter of Zeus. The Artemis program started in 2017. The focus of the Artemis program is to return astronauts to the moon and beyond. The program is a joint venture involving NASA, Boeing, and what you might have heard recently, SpaceX. An interesting fact about the program is a particular goal they have set. The goal is to be the first country to put the first female astronaut on the moon. What is the overall goal? Under Artemis, NASA will send new science instruments and technology demonstrations to study the moon, accelerate plans to send astronauts to the moon by 2024, and establish sustainable lunar exploration by the year 2028. That's amazing. Currently, SpaceX is working on next generation of full reusable launch vehicles that will be the most powerful ever built, capable of carrying humans to Mars and other destinations in the solar system. Think about that to travel somewhere in the entire solar system. When was the last launch NASA had? That's a great question. On May 31st, 2020, after a multiple day delay due to bad weather at the Kennedy Space Center, Dragon 2 launched. Astronauts Robert Benton and Douglas Hurley were in flight to the International Space Station and reopened the access to space through a locally manufactured spacecraft in America. Isn't that a great? It was built right here. Their primary focus of this mission was to dock with the International Space Station and deliver supplies and some science experiments. On your screen right now, you should be looking at the capsule. It's the Dragon 2, a manned spacecraft. This is the newest that SpaceX has put out. Astronauts teach us about courage. 
They demonstrate discipline in their daily training. All astronauts started with the dream to be in space. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad we had this time together. And I wish you many dreams as you begin to think about what you would like to be one day. I do hope you enjoyed the lesson on NASA and learned a lot about astronauts. Today, I wish you Godspeed and keep dreaming.